Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am your host, Saucy McFoodlefist, and in the last one, there was some trouble in paradise between Ro or between Hana and Luke, her husband. We shared some information with our house designer, Miss McCoa, and we kind of threatened her and we told her not to tell anybody about the relationship between Luke and I. So things definitely aren't going as well as they can be, I guess, but let's continue, shall we? <clears throat> the mansion grounds has been one of the first things to be fixed, aside from the bedroom. Although it's still a work in progress, it had a promising start, and I can already see the flower patches. Luke's flavored da fa <laughs> Luke's favored daffodil stands out easily, having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter the rooftops of our penthouse. Why, if the moving crew thought that, the, that Luke was being hard on them, they clearly didn't see the landscaper on his way out. The man looked like he was ready to faint, and Luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of their discussion. In the garden, in the gardens uh, that I see him standing near, the flowers... It is the gardens that I see him standing near, and the flowers in quiet admiration. He is hard to miss, a hulk of a man that clearly did not belong, and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him makes him mu look much larger. It is a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling little delicate things with such care. He looks up from the garden and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Whatever quarrel I had with Marianne, Luke, or anyone else is left forgotten as I put on a cordial face. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. Hope you weren't waiting too long. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. The one and only. Welcome, welcome to Maison de Wright. And yes, We've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed, but it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Oh, you, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. Hana! If I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Alrighty then. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Wright. Hana. Zachary pr proves quickly enough that I can, in fact, trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in the industry, at the very least. He is kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow, and he treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with them. I answer his questions to the best of my ability, and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one, I ask what he what the bags are for. They are quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had proc procured several items to embellish the interior wall with. Bowls of fruit, lemons, trays with pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, Cutting boards and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are brought in for a kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells, and decorative soaps. There are other things as well, too numerous to count, all in that large backpack and suitcase. Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights. Don't tell me all of these are just props. 
Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Oh, it better. We go through the rooms one at a, t one at a time, although we tackle the first ones. Although we first tackle the ones that the movers have no business in anymore. The ballroom needs a little preparation with its grand design. Although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary props that Zachary's props come in handy, considering how Johans kept the place so neat and sterile. One can practically eat off the floor. We carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with the exception to the rooms, which have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't sneak a peek at its photos yet. Funnily enough, he uses the traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, I can see that he knows enough about his craft that I'm not too worried about botched photographs. I imagine photography must be cathartic for him, judging by how at ease he is when he at ease he is how at ease he looks while taking the pictures. There are some small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of the camera. He even goes as far as to talk about the ter these terminologies like shutter speeds and aperture when I ask him about the technical aspects. I can't quite see the picture as it's made, much like I can't, much like when I watch artists paint on their canvas. But just watching someone passionately practicing their, practicing their craft such as this is exciting in a way. Going through the many rooms has been quite the exercise for both of us. Despite that, he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. But it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to the stand to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. And had I not been paying attention, I wouldn't even have noticed. It is merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. His finger doesn't move to release the shutter. Yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face. Gaze still firmly fixed through the viewfinder. His hands shake, and there is a light green, light sheen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary? No response. Zach, is something the matter? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Turning around, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I I just remembered something that's all. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? I struggle to respond this time. There's a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness around my throat. Everything stops. And everything starts again as I manage to choke out. If you're sure. I don't know what just happened. It... it was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there is an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. So, is this a full-time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly, for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least, not all the time. What is it that you want to do then? Maybe I've been out of line sticking my nose in other people's business, but I can't help but ask. 
I regret doing so as I see his shoulders slump and the easygoing air he has fades away. He looks torn over whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films. Documentaries mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibi a lot more. Very funny. So, Grand Director, do you want to tell me what Blue Fancy is all about? He hesitates. But when I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in and spills it all out. Blue Fonce le Huron la plus sombre des noirs britanniques. Okay, wow, that was really butchered, I'm sorry. Dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. He speaks with passion about, about one who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge, and experience in his speech. Why, I wouldn't I would have told him that he is an amazing speaker if only I wasn't so engrossed listening. Prejudice and discrimination in schools and in the workplace. Lesser chances for opportunity and higher chances for being treated like a criminal. He spoke of blacks and people of color in general still being treated like second-class citizens. All because of the color of their skin. It's all just positively riveting. And sad. It comes to a point where and he soon loses steam. He looks abashed, realizing what he had just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away and... It's fine. It is really so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion, after all. You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. You do have very beautiful eyes. Uh-huh. Thanks, I guess. I want to say something that I... I want to say that I understand where it's coming from. But I really don't, do I? I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, and I've lived a very charmed life. It hasn't been perfect, but the difficulties I've been through pale in comparison to what, other, what others experience on a daily basis. I certainly don't know how I would have fared were it any different. Would I still have met Luke, and would he still have loved me if I was any lesser? What was your home like? These things you talk about, it sounds like you've... Well, I don't mean to pry, I mean. Hmm? I live with my older sister and my grandparents. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our pop... Sorry, flat. And well, I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around. But a pencil and notebook would go missing, you know? Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel at times. Of course, there may be slightly a slightly different story when you have personal guards and the stolen item is not a pencil, but an expensive heirloom. So what about you? Are you liking your new house? It's pretty impressive. It's nice, I suppose. You suppose? Not big enough? What? No, oh, don't be a bully. It's just that. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. I was a little girl, all dolled up and treated like fragile porcelain, with nur nursemaids waiting for me hand and foot. All the matter, all the material possessions anyone could ever want, I could ask for on a whim, and it would be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents, just goodbye kisses in the morning before they went off to who knows where, where, the, where they were needed, needed to next. I saw them more often on the telly or in the papers than I ever did in person. I remember my old house. 
It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big holes, but nobody in it. Not really. It makes you think how alone you are. A pensive mood overcomes us. And there's a moment where neither of us are sure how often or how sh where neither of us are sure how to go on from there. Things have gotten a bit too personal, yet it is wholly uncomfortable, like as if we're fr like we've been friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. You'll make home out of it yet. He certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Just as large and extravagant. And just as empty. I hope he's right. So, Monsieur Le Photograph, you've covered the one and only Ermengarde Mansion. What's next on the agenda? The interview? Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. And they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. Anna Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah, blah. Boring. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. Blue Fonsi, The Darkest Hours of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. Those are the things that people should know about. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? People, right? We? Oui. People are shite. What do you think? Do I look good with this angle? I strike a pose while he's being busy, looking taken aback for a moment, probably not expecting me to go and say such a crass word. But he recovers quickly and, after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah, vous êtes belle. You want copies of these ones? Yes, please. So, the big boy knows French. You must have wooed a few ladies. Unless you're into gents. Either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. No, oh, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry. But I've made lunch for a girl before, and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Can you cook all your best? I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. Say money, speak. It has been too long since I've had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Lee certainly is not a good friend. And although we've just met, Zachary sort is the sort who can probably befriend anyone. He's just a comfortable person to be around. A bit too comfortable. Bouncical wow wow. Uh, the photography shoot went by, went by a breeze. And somewhere along the way, as as we talk and laugh, I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me this strange look until I back off, and he'll go back to asking questions after I've agreed to do his little interview. And it's just odd well no me being friendly isn't that odd that's just how I am Zach Zachary is the one that's being odd why anyone else would absolutely welcome extra attention I give them he on the other hand looks almost flustered about it he should he sh he should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if he, and if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind, but he's a big boy. He should be able to handle me. Yeah. All of, all of it was, all of it is, a friendly touch here, a pretty smile there, and gentle swaying of the hips as I move around. Zachary grew and grew more red each time he noticed. All I mean is, as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel... Am I being mean as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? A little bit. Perhaps. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? 
Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while, he, in, while enjoying the outside view. At least, that's how I see it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Could you maybe stop doing that? Stop? I'm not sure if I want to, though. Um... She says she's not sure if she wants to, so she's going to continue teasing. This is who I am, and I'm not going to tone myself down for somebody else. I have no obligation to do so. And at any rate, he is rather cute and a bit fun seeing him squirm. And the, what's the worst that can happen? I doubt it'll be anything bad, considering how much of a gentleman he is. Oh, stop doing what, Zack, sweetie? Touching my arm and looking at me like... that. I pause, giving him a baffled look. This is certainly the first time a man has ever complained about me being too friendly. I'm not doing anything wrong. Come on now, don't be like that. It's just a bit of fun. A bit of harmless fun. I'm sorry, it's just really uncomfortable and... And, and I don't think either of us want Mr. Wright to see us and think there's any funny business. I'm sorry. Look, can we just... We're finished with the interview already, aren't we? Uh, maybe it's about time I go. Oh, you must be joking. No, no, I'm not. Damn, shut down. You're certainly the odd one. Don't be such a killjoy. A little bit of flirting never hurt anyone. Other men would simply be delighted by my interest in them. Besides, you really are such a cutie. Well, I'm not them, Hannah. So, yeah, I'm probably odd. I don't understand you. Let me put it this way. You're a pretty lady, so this must have happened to you at least once or twice. How would you feel if someone was making you uncomfortable? Only for them to refuse when you ask them to stop and they make you out to be the one that's wrong? This isn't... This isn't the same as that. As I try to argue his point, he starts to pack the rest of his bags. This is preposterous. My main argument is... What sort of man complains about a beautiful woman being friendly with them? It seems logical in my head, but the moment I try to say it, it starts to fall apart. Yes it is. Unwanted advances don't make me feel macho or anything like that. I'm not here to argue morals or ethics, Miss Wright. I think I have more than enough for the interview if that's fine with you. I may be starting to overstay my welcome. I feel deflated. And things were going so smoothly, too. I ended up pushing too hard, just when I might have found myself a good friend. I'm not sure if I feel awful because I'm getting what I want, or because I'm not getting what I want, or because I was just compared to pigs, to the pigs I so despise. You're not even going to let me apologize. You're not a bad person, Hannah. Just... Because I really am sorry. People won't always be how you want them to be. And apology accepted. But I really do need to go. A friend of mine is expecting me. It's getting late. Will you visit again? I will be asking for copies of those photographs. Yeah, sure. I'll make you a copy. That would be much appreciated. I'll ask Johans to see you out. I feel sick to my stomach as I watch Zachary leave. It is silly to be upset over a falling out with a man who was, only a few hours ago, a complete stranger to me. That doesn't excuse my boorish behavior at all, and it doesn't make, make the ill feel feeling any better. Idling about, I stare off into space, unsure of, uh, unsure of how I feel. And I stay a good while, just standing there until the sun sets in the horizon. Disheartened, I proceed back into the mansion for supper. Alright, we are going to enter or end the video off here. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. You know, YouTube, do your thing. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.